Without any further ado, this video is on magnetic circuits. Now, the idea here is that the permeability of ferromagnetic materials is, is so much higher than that in ambient regions in which they're located, like air, that magnetic fields are confined to the, these ferromagnetic materials, much like current is confined to copper in a circuit. In that case, copper has a large conductivity. Okay, so that means that we can use a circuit approach to solve some magnetic field problems. That's a really cool and neat idea. And so let's just try to develop the analogy here. For circuits, we know that the electric field is the negative gradient of the electric potential. And we talked about magnetic potential, but we really talked about vector potential. But here we're going to just kind of briefly mention the magnetic scalar potential. We're going to define it like this so that it's playing the same role as, uh, as V for electric potential. And sometimes you'll see in books that you use a script F for magneto moment, uh, magnetomotive force, MMF, just like sometimes potential is called electromagnetic force. And whether you use script F or VM, the units are in amp turns. Because what's, what's driving the magnetic system? Well, it's, it's turns of current carrying wire that's driving that. And so in the electric circuit, we would, we would say the potential um, from, a, from B to A, or, for, or excuse me, from A to B, is uh, the integral of E dot DL. It's a line integral. And similarly, we're going to call VM to be the integral from A to B of, yep, you guessed it, H dot DL. Okay, so that's really how we're defining this magnetic scalar potential. Now, the point form of Ohm's law related the current density, J, to the electric field like this. J equals the uh, conductivity of the material times the electric field inside the material. And here, kind of the analogy would be that the magnetic flux density is the perme permeability times the magnetic field intensity. And so when we integrate these things on the, on the left for the electric case, excuse me, not psi, in the electric case we have I when you integrate the current density over some surface dot ds like that, you get the current through that surface. And over here if you integrate the magnetic flux density over some surface s b dot ds like that, you get the magnetic flux. So here the magnetic flux is playing the same role as the current in an electric circuit. That's pretty cool. So you got to keep these analogies straight when you're when you're going to solve a magnetic circuit. And over here, oh, we got our good old good old Ohm's law. Thank you. Love love Ohm's law. It's, it feels good. It feels like we're going back to home after a journey, right? And then over here, then if if you're following the analogy, then uh, the magnetic potential would be proportional to the flux, right? Because the flux is playing the same role as the current. And what is that constant of proportionality? Hmm. So um, you use script R here, and script R what is what we call the reluctance, and it's the ratio of that that magnetic potential to um, the flux. So this is, again, this is the reluctance. And it has units then of amp turns per Weber, right? It's the ratio of potential, magnetic potential that is, to the flux. Now, for a uniform conductor of conductivity sigma, length L, cross-sectional area S, we said the resistance was this thing. And we got really complicated for non-uniform 
conductors. Uh, we're not going to go there for magnetic fields. But for a uniform magnetic material of permeability mu, length L, and cross-sectional area S, the reluctance, then, it would not surprise you, is this. Nice. Okay. Also, and I'm not going to write these down, Kirchhoff's laws apply. So remember Kirchhoff's laws say that you can you can add the voltage in any loop and then the sum of all the voltages is equal to zero. So in, in our case for magnetic circuits, you, we can sum all of the scalar potentials around any loop in a magnetic material and we'll get zero. Kirchhoff's current law says that the sum of all of the currents entering a node is, is equal to zero, or the sum of the currents entering is the sum of the currents leaving. And uh, in, for magnetic circuits, we would say that the sum of all of the fluxes entering a junction in the, in the material would equal to zero. And then also series and parallel combinations of reluctances apply, and current division applies, although it would be flux division, and magnetic potential division, uh, all, all of that applies still. So uh, let me give you an example, um, just briefly. We're not going to plug in any numbers. We're going to save the numbers for the example problems. But let's say we had a toroid. So a toroid with an air gap with some current. And so some current, some looped current comes in. We got n loops. And we've got an air gap in our toroid. Toroid, excuse me. We've got an air gap in our toroid, and we would have an air gap in a toroid like that because this might be some piece of a larger, you know, electromechanical system, and so that gap is maybe rotating around something, and maybe there's like a, a plunger in that gap or something. Um, so this is actually a common situation. Now. This a toroid has a certain permeability, right? And then the gap has, if it's air, it has a, approximately mu zero permeability. So what we can do is we can say, okay, the, the current and the number of turns is creating um, an, a, a magnetomotive force. So remember that's amp turns. So we've got amp and we've got turns. So we would have a, you know, the equivalent of a voltage there. And then this uh, this steel or whatever it is has a certain reluctance, right? It has a length around the steel. You know, if we were given the radius, we, we can calculate the length minus the gap, right? And then it has a certain cross-sectional area S. And then it has a certain permeability. So we can calculate the reluctance of the steel. Then we, we come here to this air gap, and the, the gap itself has the same cross-sectional area, and it has a length, right, and it has a permeability, and so it has a reluctance. And then we come back like this. So this would be our circuit, and remember this is Vm or script F sometimes, and then what's flowing is the flux. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? And uh, so, so we've got that flux, and so we can use all the circuit analysis techniques. For example, we could say that the reluctance of the steel is in series with the reluctance of the gap, and so we can add those two reluctances together, and we can divide by the, um, the, uh, the scalar potential Vm, and we can get the flux that way. So that's really, really neat. Now, it turns out that there is a, there's a very important but subtle uh, detail that we need to understand about ferromagnetic materials. Um, it's something that we skated around before when we talked about the, the memory that ferromagnetic materials have, how, how you can kind of, uh, you can permanently magnetize them. And so that's coming up next. We got to address the subtlety and then following that are going to be some examples of magnetic circuits. So I will see you then. Thank you.